Graphene discovered in lunar samples by Chinese researchers. In 2004, the University of Manchester first isolated graphene, a remarkable material made of single-layer carbon atoms arranged in a hexagonal honeycomb structure. This discovery has since captivated scientists due to graphene's extraordinary properties, which have wide-ranging applications. It is believed that approximately 1.9% of carbon in space exists as graphene, with its shape and structure influenced by its formation process. Interestingly, significant amounts of graphene might be present on the moon. Recent research by the Chinese Academy of Science, CAS, has uncovered naturally occurring graphene in a unique thin layer structure on the lunar surface. These findings could reshape our understanding of the moon's formation and lead to innovative methods for producing graphene, impacting fields such as electronics, energy storage, construction, and advanced materials. Furthermore, this discovery could aid future lunar missions aimed at establishing permanent structures on the moon. The research team was led by professors Wei Zhang and Meng Zhu from Jilin University's Key Laboratory of Bionic Engineering and the Jilin Provincial International Cooperation, Key Laboratory of High Efficiency Clean Energy Materials. They were joined by senior engineer Xu Zhuan Li and Wen Kai Ren from CAS's Institute of Metal Research, along with colleagues from various key laboratories and lunar exploration centers. For years, scientists have theorized that the Earth-Moon system resulted from a colossal impact between a Mars-sized body, Thaya, and Earth around 4.4 billion years ago, known as the Giant Impact Hypothesis. This theory was supported by analyses of moon rocks from the Apollo missions, suggesting a carbon-depleted moon. However, recent observations of global carbon ion fluxes on the moon indicate the presence of native carbon, challenging previous beliefs. Consistent with this, an Apollo 17 sample showed traces of graphite. The Chinese team analyzed a small lunar soil sample from the Chang'e 5 mission, China's first sample return mission from the moon in 2020. Spectroscopic analysis revealed an iron compound in a carbon-rich section of the sample, closely linked to graphene formation. Further microscopic and mapping analysis confirmed the presence of graphene flakes, two to seven layers thick. The researchers proposed that the graphene might have formed during early volcanic activity on the moon, facilitated by solar winds stirring the lunar soil and its iron-containing minerals, which could transform the carbon's atomic structure. They also considered meteorite impacts as another possible formation mechanism. The paper stated, Graphene is embedded as individual flakes or part of a carbon shell enclosing mineral particles. Our results reveal a typical structure of indigenous carbon on the moon and propose its formation mechanism. This discovery could revolutionize our understanding of the moon's chemical makeup, geological history, and episodes. These discoveries could greatly impact Earth-based research, where graphene is being studied for its potential in electronics, mechanics, and material science. The study suggests new cost-effective methods for producing high-quality graphene and presents additional opportunities for lunar exploration. The identification of graphene in the core shell structure indicates a bottom-up synthesis process rather than exfoliation typically involving high-temperature catalytic reactions. Therefore, we propose a formation mechanism for few-layer graphene and graphitic carbon. The mineral-catalyzed formation of natural graphene highlights the potential for developing low-cost, scalable synthesis techniques for high-quality graphene. Consequently, a new lunar exploration program may be promoted, leading to significant breakthroughs. These findings could also benefit future lunar missions aiming to establish permanent infrastructure on the Moon. This includes NASA's Artemis program, which seeks to create a sustained lunar exploration and development program, the ESA's Moon Village Initiative, and the International Lunar Research Station, ILRS, planned by China and Russia. These programs could conduct experiments on graphene's properties and applications potentially including the construction of lunar habitats.
Thermosarier scientists propose using the moon to preserve Earth's biodiversity. Our current trajectory as a species is troubling. While Earth teems with life in even the harshest environments, human activities are pushing many species towards extinction. A group of researchers suggests an extraordinary solution, using the moon as a repository to safeguard Earth's biodiversity. The concept involves cryogenically preserving samples of Earth's life forms on the moon. At first, this idea might sound like science fiction, but it's technically feasible. By storing these samples in a lunar biorepository, we could create a backup of Earth's biodiversity. In a recent bioscience paper titled Safeguarding Earth's Biodiversity by Creating a Lunar Biorepository, researchers led by Mary Hagedorn, a senior research cryobiologist at the Smithsonian National Zoo and Conservation Biology Institute, outlined their plan. They emphasized the urgency of protecting biodiversity, noting that human activities are accelerating species extinction faster than our conservation efforts can keep up. Their proposal includes building a lunar biorepository to store cryopreserved samples of prioritized taxa. This facility would not only protect biodiversity, but also aid in space exploration and potential future terraforming. The researchers are beginning by experimenting with the cryopreservation of animal skin samples containing fibroblast cells. Fibroblasts are essential for tissue regeneration and are extensively used in regenerative medicine and tissue engineering. These cells can remain viable for hundreds of years when cryopreserved, and scientists are improving methods to thaw and recover these cells. For instance, past research has successfully cryopreserved and revived coral larvae, highlighting the potential for preserving Earth's coral biodiversity. Such techniques could be adapted for other species as well. The Moon offers a unique environment for this biorepository. The southern polar region of the Moon, with its stable, extremely low temperatures, is ideal for long-term cryopreservation. Temperatures in some lunar craters remain at or below 196 degrees Celsius, the optimal condition for preserving biological samples. The vision is to start with endangered animal species and eventually include plants and other organisms. The biorepository would serve as a safeguard against catastrophic biodiversity loss, providing a backup that could be crucial for future ecosystem restoration efforts. This proposal follows the precedent set by the Svalbard Global Seed Vault, which preserves crop diversity. However, the Lunar Biorepository would extend this concept to a broader range of species and offer protection from terrestrial threats such as climate change and natural disasters. Previous proposals, like the 2021 Lunar Arc, also aimed to protect Earth's biodiversity on the Moon, but relied on less ideal conditions. The Lunar Biorepository's use of naturally cold lunar polar craters mitigates the risk of power failure and enhances the long-term viability of stored samples. Initially, the project will focus on preserving tissues from the Starry Gobi, a fish species native to Hawaii, which has shown promising results in cryopreservation studies. The goal is to test various cryopackaging systems under space-like conditions, starting with the International Space Station. The remote location of the Lunar Biorepository provides additional protection from earthly threats, including political turmoil and warfare. While the project faces significant technical challenges, it is envisioned as a long-term international collaboration. This is a decades-long program, the authors note, highlighting the need for global cooperation to develop and manage the biorepository. They conclude that protecting Earth's biodiversity must be a top priority, and this lunar initiative could be a crucial step in that direction.